What's good, everybody? We are back. It is your boy, Gerard, and your girl, Cappy. Episode 93 of the Kicks and Shit Show. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All I gotta mm-hmm. say, can't wait for a 93, Jay. 93, 93, man. You know, we're, uh, you know, getting close to that 100. We got to do something special for that 100th episode. Um, so... I already know where in the world you are. You are in your apartment on the East Coast. Um, you know, you're working through getting your shelves set up, getting some stuff for your walls, which is interesting considering the guests we have coming up next, you know. Um, but what else is going on in those streets? I mean, bitches beware, Jay. It's been quite the week. Um, I feel like I say that every week. It's been quite we the do. week. Every, every week's been the week for you. Uh, April is a little bit of an exciting and terrifying month for me. Your girl is going to her first Coachella. Um, oh, that's right. We talked about that. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to be working Coachella. Well, not mm. working Coachella. Let me. I'm working with a brand who is doing an, a yes, massive correct. event that first At week of Coachella. Coachella. Mm-hmm. Very excited, very terrified of what I should be wearing because this is one of the very few items in my closet that is not black. Mm-hmm. Also, I cannot be wearing a hoodie in the middle of the desert. You know, I'm already True. starting to think about that stuff. Um, yep, yep. So it's going to be a lot of back and forth traveling uh, next month. But, I mean, things are good. You know, I feel like the world of sneakers and sneaker karma gods, Gerard. Let's let's just let us just. I want to this. impact this with you because I know you. Have let's so set the time. stage here. It, it's just so funny, folks, because you know, and of course, Gabby didn't ask how I'm doing. I'm fine, by the I way. I didn't get a chance to yet. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this first, and then I was going to ask you. Well, aren't you asking how I'm doing now? Let's see what's going on in these streets. So, what is going on in these streets, Jay? And then we will uh, unpack this. Yeah, you know, it's it's as you said, April's coming, so you know, spring is here, but it's kind of been weirdly cold. Not great. Uh, but uh, NBA playoffs so exciting about excited, excited about that. Uh, might be doing some traveling for playoffs. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, otherwise, you know, just maintaining out here, you know, just keeping the status quo. All right. Let's get to the unpacking stuff now, folks. <laughs> because good, though, right? Gabby so does this well. thing all the time where right, she go. loves to like, like she makes it seem as though she never gets her hands on sneakers ever. And I'm like, that's so not true because every time I talk to you, it's, oh, I got these. I got the Yeezy 750s. I got da, da, da. It's like, but I thought you never get anything. So how is it that you get your hands on everything? And we come down to the point that it isn't that she doesn't get her hands on things. It's that she doesn't win on Sneakers app. To which I responded, well, nobody wins on Sneakers app. That thing is rigged. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I would say that the hit rate is probably what? 20%? Not less, but too high. The hit rate is probably what? Less than 2%? Right? I mean, that's just, that's just what it is. That's, that's Sneakers app. We know that. I don't know. I mean, I would love to look at the stats, Jay, between yours and mine. Mine is definitely not 20% for the amount that I enter. I don't mine know how isn't many 20% you enter. either. Mine isn't 20%. I don't know how many either. you enter, but I don't enter a ton, but I don't I don't hit often. I think that is closer though, because probably I don't know if I remember correctly. I think mean, dust off the old brain over here when you won those patent breads on sneakers app, Jay. <laughs> I sure I sure did. A bit of a rant on Twitter. I just I, I don't know. <laughs> She lost her mind, and I'm like, no, I'm so like, why? Right. I'm, I'm gonna set it straight on the record. <laughs> I never have claimed to say I don't buy sneakers. That is a lie. That is fake news. <laughs> if I said that at one point, roll the tape, cancel me. Like, fine. I, I, I don't think I've ever said that, but I don't win on sneakers. That is something I have said. That the whole joke is, if even if you're featured on the sneakers app. Doesn't mean you win more, which I actually appreciate that though, because it's not like Nike's giving anyone any handouts just because they feature talent. So mm-hmm. I get that. I respect it. You know, I just, I do want to say though, part of it for me, and I had a conversation about this with somebody earlier today is does the amount that you buy on Nike or spend mm-hmm. on the Nike app or the sneakers app impact? I, I don't know. I have no confirmation of this, but I do know that a few years ago, there were two pairs of sneakers that I ended up returning because resale wasn't what it is now. It was like years ago, but I won them on the sneakers app. Not Nothing that was crazy hype. It was like a pair of foams that were too big and then a pair of like camo fives that were suede that just didn't fit right. So I returned them instead of selling them. Maybe give someone else a chance, right? I don't know if that is what put me kind of in a no-fly zone for a little while because – your girl was not winning anything. And and I was playing the slots all the time, Jay. 
You know what I mean? You know, I am always trying, but always. When I had I was stricken with COVID back mm. in December. I was like, you know what I need? I need a swaggy at home Nike fit because what better occasion to buy a jogger and crew neck sweatshirt set than for yourself when you're not seeing anybody, right? Totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. So, I'm with you. Um, so I started buying a bunch more on Nike, started shopping a bit more. I got a Nike travel sneaker case, which I'm kind of obsessed with. And all of a sudden, the clouds and the heavens opened up and your girl won on Air Max Day, mm-hmm, Jay. Mm-hmm, sure did. Air Max Day, uh, not your favorite day of the year, but one of your favorite days it's of the year. one of my favorite days of the year. So it's like... Second to what? Super Bowl? Mm. I think Thanksgiving. Sounds about right. Too. Sounds about right, yeah. National Sneaker Day in October, also another favorite day. <laughs> nothing else inconsistent. Um, but I also, hot off the press, won again today. I'm convinced I'm not winning ever again, by the way. I got the the blazer, the Sakai's, the Lowe's, which I'm not normally a blazer girl, so I was very excited when this happened. I was like, this is too good to be true. But I wonder, Gerard, is this because I've been buying more on Nike? Is it because I took L's for a long time and all of a sudden, maybe it's my turn? I don't think the world will ever know. I'm very happy about it, though. That's all I got to say. Thank you to the sneaker gods. And now I would love your thoughts. I think that – so, look, we – I don't know what the rhyme or reason is with sneakers app and how you win and how you don't, right? Do some people win more than others? Sure. But that's like, there's a luck factor involved, right? Like, sure, some people just somehow happen to get things more than others. But I don't know that anybody hits at like a high rate on sneakers. I agree with that. Because it's just just the nature of how that shit works. There's only so many pairs that exist and Mm -hmm. more people want them, right? So it's just, you're never going to get it hit at a high rate. Now, bots don't, I'm not counting bots because that's not, that's fucking, that's something else. That's like, you know, that's, that's rigging the game so you win. I mean, actual legit human beings who try to win on their own. Um, I don't know that anybody has a high hit rate on that. That's just how it goes. Um, I don't go after every release. I don't know if that matters though, right? Like, so yes, in terms of like my average, my average is higher, but I bet if I went for every release, it wouldn't be. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I think it's just a matter of the math, just like mathing in, at, at that point. Um, I will say that, you know, how how did you, have you won on the confirmed app? I've never won on the confirmed app. Nope, I have not. Um, okay. And Oh, wait, that's know. not true. No, no, it wasn't the confirmed app. It was just regular, regular Adidas app. I haven't won on the confirmed app. No, I have not. You know, I mean, you guys were on the journey with us during Easy Day last year while I was entering the draw live on this show. Um, No, but I I will say though, I think, you know, the sneakers app, it's become almost like, I don't want to say comical because, you know, it's not fun to lose, but it's like a right of passage of sneaker culture, right? Like the memes, all of it. It doesn't mean I rock with Nike or Jordan any less, but I will say though, the one thing that I really appreciate about the sneaker community is whenever I post my L's, first of all, it's because it's something that I truly love. That's all, Those are the only shoes that I go after, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the sneaker karma gods, there's just too many launches right now, which... Way like too many. Said, it's a beautiful time for sneakers because anything that you like, there's probably an option for you, which I love. But that means that there's so much more variety and in inventory that you can't go after it all. Otherwise, I'd be living like in a house made of sneaker boxes. Which is amazing. What, but what, what did your mom call your 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 Jordan Your mortgage, your mortgage shoes. Mom, I, I have a Jewish mother, and I was like, I'll never show her what my sneaker shelves look like, or tell her how many pairs. Very personal. Sorry, mom. Love you, mean it. But um, part of the reason I post is because it's almost like sending out a bat signal for me. Yeah. And the yeah. sneaker community is amazing. That. You know, even some of our our former guests, like, will help with an assist. Oh, hey, I know someone who has this a little bit above retail. Or, hey, I can get this for you in this size. And I think, you know, to me, that's what's really beautiful about the sneaker game. And, you know, as a backup, like, there are the stock X's of the world and the goats. Like, so if if the price is right, you really want, like, great. But, again, I'd rather support small business, support my friends. Mm -hmm. and, And I think that's. Just to clarify on record why I post the L's, but I'm always taking L's. I mean, you know, I'm trying to build my collection. I'm trying to have some West Coast pairs. So no doubt, you know, it just mm-hmm. 
It's the nature of the game these days, and I don't see that ever changing. Not no, no. Space. Yeah, because it, there's just so many awesome pairs and so many things yeah. out there that it's just hard to, you know, you're going to take else, right? That's just, it's, you're, you're going to lose more than you win, right? But like, think about it. It's like baseball, right? Like, that is a sport where you fail more times than you succeed. But if you but if you succeed thirty percent of the time, you're a Hall of Famer, right? Like it's just that's that's right. That's how shit works. So you know is what it is. Uh, but coming up, folks, as you know, Gabby's got a new apartment and she's got some things she's got to work on in that new apartment. Our next guest, I think, could potentially help her out. So stay tuned. What's good, everybody? We are back, and Gabby, we are not alone. We are joined by artist extraordinaire. Uh, Tori Kirahar. Tori, how are you? Good. How are you? I am excellent. Did you like that? Artist extraordinaire. I did. I think mm. you are the first person to introduce me in that way. So I love see, it. Oh. See, see how that works? <laughs> see how that works? Every time a guest comes on, I got to really hype them up. That's the whole thing. All right. So it. you, I mean, obviously you're an artist. You went to school uh, in LA for that. The uh, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, right? Like all that. So you are... You knew something you were going to do when your life was going to be art related, but mm -hmm. it really kind of spawned into this thing where you're doing merchandise, painting, like all, like what was the genesis? Like you graduate from school, what catapulted you to this where you are right now? Um, okay. Well, first of all, I actually went to a regular university for about two and a half years <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was just like, man, I don't really... I thought like regular courses in university would, I would enjoy it. And then yeah. I didn't. Yeah. So um, I went to FITM. I graduated with a product development um, degree. And then I was like convinced that I wanted to become a technical designer right after graduation. Okay. And things did not go as planned. Um, and I moved back to Seattle and I started painting a lot. And so I really kind of took that direction in terms of like an artist trying to get into full-time painting. And I did that on and off for years. And it wasn't until like the last two years that I really started getting back into clothing and like more so putting my artwork on mm -hmm. clothing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it all kind of came full circle, um, yeah. which was cool because I didn't yeah. really realize that until kind of recently. I was like, oh, I did go to fashion school. <laughs> and that's really all that I've been doing lately is a lot of clothing stuff okay. and apparel. Okay. And so you, you moved back to Seattle and you started something called The Fields, right? Which is this sort of like artist and, you know, think it's for Seattle, right? And for artists of color in Seattle to really like collaborate, yeah. get together and share their work. I, I assume representation was a big thing while you're like, well, there aren't enough things that are for people like us, so I should do something. That yeah. was for sure one of the reasons, but what else spurred that on? So the first feels showcase, which it's kind of confusing the feels, we have the feels foundation, which is our nonprofit mm -hmm. organization. And then we have the feels showcase, which is mm -hmm. the very first thing that ever came from the feels. Um, I really wanted to be, I set a list of goals for myself when I first moved back to Seattle and was like, oh, I really want to do an art show, but like no one knows that I paint. So I'm just going to put on my own art show and then I'm going to make it a community event as well and bring on all the other dope artists that I know. And well, I'll just put on a show and raise money for a nonprofit organization that also benefits youth of color in the Seattle area. And after the first show, it really, um, got a lot of good feedback. And so the showcase is like the biggest event of the year, but in the last six years, like I brought my partner Zach on board, who is the other half now of the fields. And we, it's just really grown into this um, foundation that really just wants to support artists, primarily artists of color. Um, and really just try to uplift the Seattle community. And now we're trying to like expand and make it, a little bit bigger than just Seattle based because we now bring in like other artists out of Seattle for the showcases and stuff. And now um, we're going on what, six years? Yeah, well, this was our sixth showcase back in February, the first one since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We did year five, which was supposed to be a big year for us and it still was, but it was just virtual. So um, yeah, 
we're going on year seven next mm. February. Awesome. So we're pretty excited. You know, one of the things that I find interesting with artists is when you are just out with them, like in just, you know, the world, like you're whatever you're, you're going to brunch or you're going shopping or whatever, you all see the world very differently. Um, and you know, that's, that's your creative gene. What, where does your inspiration draw from? Where do you draw your inspiration from? And how do you sort of find inspiration when you're just out in the streets, for lack of a better term? Oh, man. Uh, I think it's different for the different things that I'm creating, whether that's painting. My inspiration comes from different places. Painting, I find, as of late and as of, like, the last few years since I've kind of transitioned into doing more apparel-based things, um, it's harder for me to find inspiration. Those things kind of really just come from like how I'm feeling at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. A lot of everything. Well, actually everything I do is pretty feelings based. Um, so that's where a lot of my paintings come from. My apparel is more just stuff that I want to wear. Um, and the hoodie that Gabby has on. <laughs> I was saying, that was, I also want to wear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the stuff is kind of random and it doesn't, it doesn't really have to do with feelings. That's just that the way that um, hoodie came about and that what originally started as a shirt was I like always say that. And I was saying it to my boyfriend in the car one day. I was like, man, bitches be so weird. And I was like, I'm actually going to throw that on a shirt. I'm just going to start doing these things all the time where I start throwing in, like throwing stuff on t-shirts that I just say randomly that I'm like, Oh, this is how I feel today. <laughs> A whole mood. I, you know, when I first <laughs> they had to get it because support your friends and it's it's true, bitches be weird. Um, but I, I know growing up in Seattle, especially like you having a sister who's creative, like mm-hmm. talk about a little bit more about that Seattle culture and how that kind of and, and just being in a creative household really kind of shaped the way that you have formed your path. Yeah, so Seattle in terms of the rest of the world is a little bit smaller, not too much smaller. We're, pro- we're still a progressive city, but um, I feel like I was just surrounded by a lot of creative people growing up too. And maybe that's just the way like in the areas or the schools that my parents raised us in, we're all really art driven and full of creatives. But I feel like the community in Seattle, like they're pretty supportive of things and we all kind of stick together like really utilizing each other and each other's creative and stuff like that to put on events like the fields or whatever and um you know my sister is a creative in her in in a different way maybe not like a painting way but she does a lot of things and sometimes we kind of cross over in the same areas now with our work which is really cool to see um and Growing up with her, I just, um, I really saw how she kind of went after the things that she wanted to go after um, in terms of how she's paved her way in her career and stuff like that. So it's really inspired me to do a little bit more with the things that I'm passionate about, which is painting and apparel and stuff like that too. So I, I love the eyes, by the way. So they're they're, they're staring Thank at you. me over your over your left shoulder. Oh yeah, that's there. And, <laughs> yeah, and and on your on your necklace. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about that design. I love that. Thank you. Um, I have always enjoyed drawing eyes, uh, sketching eyes. The more realistic ones is mm-hmm. how I started doing it. But then when I kind of got into this more like cartoonish, like fun style of art the eyes just kind of stuck and that was always just my thing um so ever since i drew the more recent version of my eyes they just kind of have stuck and i feel like it goes a lot with the things that i talk about with my brand and just like me in general like feelings and stuff like i do a lot of crying eyes all the time so (laughs) yeah (laughs) You you mentioned um, cartoonish and sort of like when I hear that I think of caricature right so like if you're yeah. painting something right like a person well you can make like a portrait right which is pretty much as close to what they look like as possible and then there's like yeah. right a cartoon version or a caricature do you find that within the caricature and the cartoon version you're allowed to like you can get a little more fun and like really 
tap into the feeling part of it. I mean, you can see feeling in a portrait for sure, but I feel mm-hmm. like with cartoon and caricature, you can probably do more. Yeah. I mean, I do these cartoons, these character caricatures on, um, like I've started doing them of other people now and taking them as commissions. So those have been really fun. But I do it in more of a cartoonish, in the way I say cartoonish is because they're not super realistic portraits. They do resemble the people, um, I think, pretty well. But, you know, their heads are huge and their bodies are small. And um, they're just like a more fun version of like a realistic version of someone. That sounds like most of Hollywood. I love it. I, I'm like, Jay, we, I feel like we got to get a, a drawing done of the two of us. What do you think? Yeah. Um. I see. I, I knew you were going to go there. I already I knew that was going to happen. Am I right? Of course I'm going to go I mean, there. first of all, you're a weirdo. So yours will be like really crazy. You don't want to do it together though? Like, well, we, oh, we, yes, we can definitely do it together. He what he's doing here. He's like, no, nope, separate. Mm-mm. Yeah. I've done a couple of people's podcasts. Um characters so oh all right yeah. so let's we're, i think we're gonna have to commission her all right that's it <laughs> tori's getting commissioned she's doing our podcast character let's see what what the people think about them i think they're gonna be great i'm yeah. very excited um i, I do want to know more <laughs> just going back to the apparel obviously i'm a fan of your work in your apparel um Thank but you. i i know you mentioned just in the recent like year or two that you started doing more of that um did the pandemic and just kind of being home i, I know there's I feel like that was the theme of my pandemic was feels. So mm-hmm. I can relate to when yeah. you say that very much so. But also inspiration, right? Like we started the show during the podcast or during the pandemic. There are so many mm-hmm. positive changes that I, I've been hearing about in general that have kind of like birthed from this crazy time in, in our lives yeah. and history. So I'd love to know more how that impacted you and inspired you in a different kind of way. Yeah. I mean, the pandemic was crazy for everyone. And Honestly, I feel like my best work has come since then, especially in the apparel world. Um, The first clothing item, the Today I Feel shirt, was really the first shirt that I dropped. And then that was kind of just what I stuck to doing. Um, And... Yeah, it was all feeling based, but I feel like a lot of my work, even before that, was all based on feelings. I just feel like the pandemic was able to help me transition my work into a way that was um, utilizing the resources that I already have and doing what I can that was in um, my scope and it working out well for me, but then it also reaching a lot of people in such a good and positive way. Um, you know, people had to get creative during the pandemic to start creating income where we could all like survive and stuff during the pandemic. So, uh, it was just more about, yeah, thinking what I could do from home to the best of my ability. I know that like printing shirts and stuff is a lot of outsourcing and stuff, but the whole design aspect part of it was I was able to do it from home. So um you know now it's a little bit different now i can go in the print shops and stuff like that and really be hands-on with the apparel that i'm producing and stuff which is cool but yeah the pandemic taught me a lot the characters came out of that too which was cool because um my sister was actually the one that was like you need to think smarter like (laughs) what do you have already on hand that you can use to help create an income and i was like well she's like use your ipad you draw on it all the time so i was like oh okay that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> is she your older sister she is okay she sounds is. like she's definitely giving all the advice it sounds it sounds like yeah. things that older siblings do i said that sounds yeah like <laughs> yeah very much like casey yeah she's uh she's de- she's the older sister sometimes people confuse it and think i'm the older sister but yeah she's the older sister and she does definitely give good advice when it comes awesome. to business especially well listen it's always great when you have family who who can support you and, and help you out and be sounding boards so yeah. you mentioned your, your clothing line and that hoodie is great um you know what are you seeing right now in the streets in terms of streetwear in terms of sneakers are you see? I mean, look, those are all pieces of art, right? And kind of like mm-hmm. iconography in that way. But are you seeing like, you know, brands really taking their art to the next level? Or is it kind of like, meh, more of the same? 
I think I've seen a lot more um, creativity in the apparel world and the sneaker world, just because I feel like a lot of people are starting to tap into their creative side and really like run with it. Like I know so many people that have either started trying to get involved in the apparel industry and stuff like that, um, that have done really well. And maybe this wasn't something that they originally thought they were going to do or, you know, had plans of, but it just kind of happened. And, you know, I think now the way things work in the clothing world and stuff like that, especially um, like streetwear and stuff like that, folks are able to really um, put their own creative into, you know, shirts, you know, hoodies, whatever. And it translate really well because it reaches the audience that you want it to reach. And I think a lot of that has to do with social media too, which has been a blessing because I feel like that's a huge role in a lot of people's business, including mine now. So people that you would never connect with, you know, cause I'm not like a, a lot of my um, sales and stuff besides pop-ups like complex con and, you know, other pop-ups I do here, everything is online based. So it's easier to reach people that way. Yeah, for sure. Have you seen a connection um, with people picking up your merch and like sneaker heads and like, have you kind of been doing a, a bit of a crossover there? Um, yeah, I think the clothing that I produce uh, is very easy to pair with sneakers and the colorways that I use. People are able to match them a lot with the stuff that I make. So no, I agree. I like this gives me like Air Max Day vibes that <laughs> I can rock with the ones. I love this with the different colors. Um, and I, I think there's always there's this meme that I feel like I see every couple of months, right? About like online, it's almost like you get more support from others than you do necessarily your friends. But it just shows yeah. the reach of social media and the internet mm -hmm. right now. Um, I know you also talk about uh, in getting inspiration from sneakers. What kind of sneakers are you loving right now? Um, I always love my Sean's. I feel like those go with that hoodie too. Yeah, um, so. so I wear those a lot. Um, geez, I feel like I have definitely gone more in the comfort route as of the last few years too, especially since the pandemic. Um, I wear my Yeezy runners a lot. Um, those are really comfortable and pretty much go with anything. And yeah, I like to keep it kind of simple. Um, I've recently started loving Pumas. Um, mm. I I do some work with them, like uh, social media work. And so I get sent a bunch of shoes from them and they're so comfortable. So comfortable, yeah. We like Pumas. So Pumas, comfortable. Yeah, Pumas are great. Big fan of the brand. Yeah. Plus it's Jungle yeah. Cat. Who doesn't like Jungle Cats? They're great. Yeah, they've just been doing a bunch of cool stuff, too. They had that really cool collab with June Ambrose mm -hmm. um, close to All-Star Weekend. So, yeah, I'm really loving their shoes as of late. So if you had, if any sneaker brand tapped you to do a collab, who would you, what would the dream collab be and what would the silhouette be that you'd want to do? You don't tell me what the design is, but what would be the, the uh, dream company and, and the dream silhouette that you'd want to do a collaboration with? Um, I think definitely Nike. Mm -hmm. Jordan ones would be really fun. I've seen like a lot of I know they've done some collaborations with artists in the last few years too, which has been really cool. And I think that's like the perfect most classic silhouette to work with. Um, yeah, that or I really love my dad shoes. So <laughs> and and I feel like doing my own spin on the Monarchs would be really fun. Oh, I like that. I like that you're going yeah. Monarchs. That's kind of cool. <laughs> a Monarch or a 550, I feel like, or like the Death yeah. Grails. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Love that. Definitely. I like that. I mean, let's let's see if we can push that agenda, Gabby. Like, get get Tori a collab <laughs> on the dad shoes. See, yeah. see how yeah. that would work. I was like texting Tara as we speak. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. That would be so fun. Actually... That was like the first, like, 
I wouldn't say I'm like a huge sneakerhead or anything. I think my sister kind of takes that, you know, <laughs> takes that role out of us. But I definitely love, you know, I, I enjoy um, shoes and clothes and apparel and all of that and styling things. So I think Monarchs were the first like thing that I've ever done with like a, a kicks related mm. thing. I did something with nice kicks like years ago and it was on the monarchs <laughs> when the dad Ooh. shoes started kind of coming in style. So <laughs> yeah, that's one of their biggest shoes. So I get it. And I think, you know, one of the draw and I talk about this a lot. One of the most beautiful things about sneaker culture these days, I know we joke about how no one can get their hands on anything, but because it's so in demand, there are so many more styles and colors yeah. and textures now. So it's it's a great time for people who are are just getting into sneakers or maybe don't have a, a hundreds in their collection, but they just yeah. really appreciate sneakers. Yeah, and they're not like crazy resale price right now. You can still buy Monarchs pretty much <laughs> anywhere <laughs> online at Dick's at. <laughs> Pretty much you, anywhere, God, but you hear it now. Just, just you wait, my friend. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm not laughing. I'm I, what I'm loving at is laughing at is the fact that we have someone on here pushing monarchs. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> you know, no, it's great. Like, I'm listen about it, but it, I feel like there's way more people that are in a monarch than choose. What do we them. always say? Like what you like. It does, right. It doesn't matter what else is out there or what's the hype shoe or whatever. Yo, if you like Monarchs, then wear your Monarchs, man. Like, yeah, do you. And I think a collaboration with Tori and Nike that Monarchs would be, would be great. Beautiful. So, that's, here But that's like the the blueprint for a lot of these like designer sneakers that are coming out now. You know, like the Balenciagas are very similar to a mm-hmm. shoe like the Monarchs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm all these other dad shoes that are like thousands of dollars from these high end fashion designers starting see? from shoes like the monarchs. See that folks. <laughs> Look at that. You're, you're getting yourself a little bit of education here. All right, everyone <laughs> stay tuned because coming up next is America's favorite segment shoe and tell presented by another lane, the premier digital marketplace for dope kicks. Now, we already heard that she loves Monarchs, so maybe, maybe we'll see a pair of Monarchs. Maybe we won't. Who knows? She also said she likes Pumas. Who knows? You might see anything. Stay tuned. What's good, everybody? We are back, and you know what time it is. America's favorite segment, Shoe and Tell, presented by Another Lane, the premier digital marketplace for dope kicks. Guys, you know about Another Lane. You know about all the good stuff on that website. You're trying to find rare shoes. You want to get with like-minded people. Get on to anotherlane.com. Sign up. Become a member. All right. Tori. Shoe and Tell is your show, just like how it was when you were in kindergarten. Show us the stuff and tell us why you like it. Okay, well, I brought one pair of shoes. My actual favorite pair of shoes, though, of all time, I will say, is the Grapes. Um, They're at home, though, in Seattle. I did Mm. not bring them here, Mm. Uh, but they're pretty Where where is here? I'm in L.A. right now. I live in L.A. But they're back home in Seattle with the rest of my things that I left behind. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite in high school. And then they got pretty beat up afterwards because I'm not like the best uh, person about keeping all my sneakers clean. <laughs> well, so, you wear them, so it's all good. It's okay. I'm going to send yeah. you some prep wipes and some prep protection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please do. Okay, so <laughs> I brought my Sean's. Ooh. These are like the only shoe I think in – the last how many years since the space jams that i actually like made a real effort to like go out the day they dropped and like go get them um i don't yeah i'm not really um i haven't done that in a really long time i think these are the last shoe i've actually done that like tried to go get them That's a good one though. What, um, what 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 is it about those that really that that, that drew that drew you in <clears throat> uh, the colors the colorway is awesome and they're so comfortable comfort they're comfortable the color and i like the corduroy texture okay, i love the texture on those yeah they yeah very cool there's a lot of cool um you know things to this shoe a lot of cool details like the velcro part right here the inside is so soft the like velour you know interior and the little smiley faces i love smiley faces <laughs> feels it's all about feels yeah i got one on the sweatshirt too right there oh, that's yep true. a weird place <laughs> what else you got any pumas hanging around there 
Um, okay, I haven't worn these yet. That's all right. But these are just an example of the Pumas that mm. I do have. They're new suede that they sent me a fresh pair of these guys. Um, they're just so comfortable. And I like the shape of the foot. I don't really like narrow shoes because I don't have the most narrow foot. But these are actually so comfortable. And they go with, like, everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. everything. I've been wearing a lot of these Pumas lately. I have a bunch of Puma boxes right here. So. Puma, Puma suede lows are among my favorites. I, if it, you know, yeah. You get them in a bunch of different colorways, right, to kind of get your get your outfits together. I, I'm a huge yeah. fan. Gabby, yeah. you, got, you like Puma, Puma low suede, right, Gabs? I do. I haven't rocked any in, in a minute, but I do feel like, like I hoop in, well, hoop. I use that term. <laughs> I'm Puma basketball shoes right now. I just got a pair of the Dreamer. I love it. She's like, I hoop. I'm like, they're oh, word, really gotta... comfortable. <laughs> they are. I got the Dreamer lows that um, I think like I saw a little bit over Instagram with like the black with the neon. I just the way they use colors and color blocking. It just it's different than what anyone else is doing right now. And I think it's just mm -hmm. such a yeah. cool shoe. I know I always talk about even like the Haribo collab, like the, the way that they mm -hmm. use details and incorporate on a partnership like that that is not like in your face gummy bears. But like it's the little details, like the little the little hang tag on there, um, the detail on the back of the the back of the heel. So I think the way that Puma plays with different colors and textures is is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. no, Puma Puma's doing great stuff. Like we talked about their basketball um, line, we talked about signing, um, you know, all, all the different art yeah. athletes lately. Like I I love it. Like. Look, you know we love Nike and we'll always love Nike. Um, but what Puma's doing is really cool and we're, you know, we're happy to see brands try different things and do cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah. W. Love it. Mm-hmm. Tori, tell the people where they can find you if they wanna, you know, talk about your art, hit you up and stuff. Yeah. Where 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 can they <laughs> where can they find you? Uh my Instagram uh is Tori Kirahara. Um, my website is also torikirahara.com and those are really the two places to get in contact with me. I'm on Love Instagram it. all the time. I respond to emails too from my website. So Love it. Well, folks, we are part of the Count the Dings family and you can find us on the bomb podcast feed with of course the original bomb show with crypto bros with the Lakers winning time documentary recap show with woke bros. I mean, this is, this is where it's at. And of course we are on social media at kicks and shit show on all social media platforms. And until next time, peace.